Hello friends, welcome back to another video of AutomationTestingInsider.com and today I'm going to talk about V model or you can say VNV model or verification and validation model. So guys already I have covered, already I have spoken about verification and validation and quality assurance and quality control. So if you haven't watched those videos, I would recommend first go through those videos and come back to this video. However, I have provided the link in the description box of this video. I have provided the complete playlist of uh, manual testing as well as software development models. So you can watch, uh, you can check out them and watch them and then please come back to this video. So let's talk about V model today. So why it is called V model? So here all the uh, phases which are involved in V model are executed or uh, yeah, executed in a V shape manner. So that's why it is called V model and it is an extension of water mo waterfall model where each phase of testing is associated with development fees. So I'll take you to my system guys where uh, we'll discuss more about V model, what are the different advantages of V model and disadvantages. So let's, let's get started. So guys, let's talk more about V model. The V model is type of software development lifecycle model where process executes in sequential manner in V shape. It is also known as verification and validation model, which we have discussed earlier. So sequential manner in V shape means like this. So that's why it is called V model. The V model is an extension of waterfall model and is based on association of testing phase for each corresponding development phase. So this part of uh, V left side is called software development life cycle and this is software testing life cycle this is this belongs to the development team and this is belongs to testing team and uh, what is the next this is highly disciplined model and next phase starts only after completion of the previous phase so it is like waterfall model guys so we cannot jump to the next phase until unless this phase is completed but corresponding we have testing phase so you can understand the next slide better where I'll talk more about a V model, the pictorial represent, representation of V model. And this part of uh, V is also called quality assurance and this is quality control. This is verification and this is validation. The left side part is called verification and right side is validation, which already uh, we have talked about in the last video, uh, previous videos. So let's talk more about V model guys. So let me just draw a diagram in V shape like this. Now, what is the first thing? Uh, we get the requirement from the customer in the form of CRS, customer requirement specification. So this is dev team and this is testing team. Now we got the requirement from the customer with the help of BA. BA will work with customer business analyst will work with customer to get the requirement and got the requirement. Now BA will convert that requirement into BRD document, business requirement document. And with the help of manager, it will be given to development team and testing team. Now what tester will do here? They will do three things. They will go through BRD and they will create acceptance test plan acceptance test plan and they will create acceptance test cases acceptance test cases and while going through all these phases like going through the brd creating the acceptance test plan or creating the acceptance test cases if they find any ambiguity in the requirement or if they need clarification so they can contact with the dev team with the help of a business analyst yeah they can contact with the business analyst project manager to get the clarification of the brd business requirement document basically they will compare they will uh, they will get the crs also customer requirement specification and they will compare with brd here testing team and this level of testing is called acceptance. Acceptance test. So do not worry about different levels of testing guys. 
i'll talk about more in coming videos so this level is acceptance test now what is the next phase brd will be converted to srs with the help of architect uh, the ba will convert that into with the help of project manager and architect of the project will convert that into srs software requirement specification and it will be given to both development team and testing team because development needs to understand the software requirement specification and that at the same time it will be given to testing team as well so what what is the next for testing team so they will compare both like srs document with respect to brd and they will create they will go through go through srs documents software requirement specification they will create system system test plan and system test cases i'll talk more about like how do you create the test plan guys test plan and test cases in coming videos do not worry about that so just understand like they will create they will go through the software requirement specification with respect to brd they will compare in in case if they find anything they will they can revert it back to the development team and the tester at the same time will create the test plan system test plan and system test cases and this level of testing is called system test now what is next so here hld who will create high level design so hr hld will be created over here with the help of architect who creates the framework or uh, create the high level design document srs will be converted to high level design document and, and it will be given to both development team as well as testing team now here tester will compare high level design document with srs with srs so already i have spoken about high level design what is high level design low level design software requirement specification brd in previous videos guys you can refer those videos now here tester will go through uh, high level design and they will create integration test plan over here integration test plan and integration test cases integration test cases and this level of testing is called integration test integration test now what is next now hld will be hl hld will be converted to low level design hld will be converted to low level design that is lld and it will be given to testing team as well testing team will compare low level design versus high level design like high level design is converted properly to low level design or not if they find any discrepancy or any uh, any mismatch things then they can revert it back to development team now here tester will uh, this is functional functional test here it will come functional test now here what tester will do they will create the functional test plan functional test plan and functional test cases functional test cases and anyone anyway they, they will go through the low level design document low level design document here and they will create functional test cases and functional test plan and they will create functional test cases now what is next now developer will do the coding over here coding with the help of low level design document and now this will be given to the testing team as well i mean they will release the software to the testing team 
before releasing they will do here white box testing and or else you can say unit level testing unit test unit test so this white box testing or unit level testing is uh, will be done with help of either developer or or white box tester now we got the software guys here we got the software now that will be given to the uh, i mean it it is given to the testing team now what tester will do because once in unit testing is done by the development team or white box tester now the software is ready now we'll execute our functional test cases because it is already ready over here after completing the functional test cases we will revert uh, we will go for integration test integration test of all the modules so in case in this process if you get any difficult uh, defects or anything then we can raise it in our defect tracking tool and we can get it rectified from development team now after integration test we will execute system test and at last we will execute the acceptance test so this is the complete flow of b model guys so one second yeah so this is the complete flow of b model guys so let's talk about the next point in the slide so when to use v model so the project is short requirements are well defined clearly documented and fixed product definition is stable and there are no ambiguous or undefined requirements so this is like v model when we go for v model uh, waterfall model when we have uh, when the project is short so this is also useful for short term projects and what is next the when to use is done what are the different advantages of v model so start testing from beginning of the project so you can see we have seen in that uh, slide when i have drawn the diagram of v model so each testing starts from the beginning of the first phase from the beginning of the project so that is an advantage of b model testing include both validation and verification defect found at early stage cost uh, so that cost of fixing defect is very less so because each phase we are verifying the documents different documents so that's why cost is uh, cost of fixing the defect is very less because we'll we'll get very less defects when we do the actual testing in b model as testing is involved from beginning better understanding so better understanding of the doc requirement so these are the different uh, advantages what are the disadvantages not a good model for complex and object oriented project so if it is big project uh, big project guys it it will be the process is very complex right so this process itself is complex so it is not useful for big project or complex project poor model for long and ongoing projects not suitable for the projects where requirements are at moderate to high risk of changing if requirements are changing frequently so this model is of no use i mean it's very hard to go for v model once an application is in the testing stage it is difficult to go back and change a functionality so because we have already gone through all the phases of development life cycle and once with once it is delivered to the testing team after the unit testing we have seen integration uh, unit testing over here and then it is very difficult to go back and change that functionality because we have already gone through lots of stages and more documents are required uh, more document documentation are very high here documentation uh, we have to create lots of uh, documentation uh, process documents we have to go through all the process documents so these are the different uh, disadvantages of b model no working software is produced until late during the life cycle so in this phase the software is not developed it is developed after certain stages only so these are the drawbacks of uh, b model guys 
so thank you for watching guys and please like and share this video and comment if you have any questions and please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you